What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, the two new upcoming infrastructure package, and the next stimulus package known as the American Families Plan, as well as what is going on in the world today. Lots to cover here today. Uh, we're going to jump right in. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates, and hit the like button for us. It really helps out our channel. The Tokyo Olympics is under a lot of strain as um, there's a chance that the Summer Olympics could be canceled as they're starting in 50 days. 10,000 volunteers just dropped out because of COVID risk. COVID is spreading through Japan right now, and only about 2 to 3% of their population has been vaccinated. Compare that to the United States, where over 50% of people have received at least one vaccination, and over 40% of people in the U.S. have received both vaccinations, or one in the case of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And um, outside tourists are not allowed to go to the games, only people from Japan. That's right. Foreign visitors will not be allowed to attend the Olympics in person. And uh, yeah, it's there's a chance it's going to be completely canceled because, again, only two to three percent of their population is vaccinated and uh, they basically have no herd immunity where the U.S. has over 50 percent of people uh, have had at least one shot. And, you know, that that really kind of compounds. A lot of people don't really understand that. So what happens is if one person has it and they would have normally spread it to say three different people and from there it was spread to other people. But now if you say two out of three of those people were vaccinated, instead of spreading it to three people, it's only going to spread to one pe one person. Uh, so literally two thirds of people did not get it because they were vaccinated. So uh, remember, vaccination does not mean you won't get it. Um, similar to a flu vaccine or a flu shot, um, but it makes it highly unlikely you won't get it. So what happens is if you breathe the COVID in, um, your body will basically just kill it right away because you have antibodies for it, and um, it really reduces the spread immensely. And um, this is kind of what we're seeing right now, why our cases are going down so low. Um, a lot of experts are worried about the um, variants coming in the future, as well as if we will need booster shots and possibly yearly shots going forward. Here is Dr. Anthony Fauci on that. On vaccines, do you think that we will need booster shots this year? Do you think that is something on the distant horizon? Or do you think that's something we should be thinking about in 2021? I don't know. To be quite honest with you, Rachel, I don't know. I believe that sooner or later we will need a booster because the immunity might wane and start to trickle down. But I don't know right now, none of us know, whether it's gonna be a year from now or longer or a little bit less. What we're doing is we're following two elements. The first is the correlate of immunity. In other words, the laboratory data that indicate that if this is the level that you need and you are up here, how long does it take for you to start going back down and getting below the protective level. That's called a correlate of immunity. The other element you follow is if you start to see more breakthrough infections among people who are vaccinated. In other words, not as much protection as you were getting. Whether that's going to be a year from now or 18 months, we don't know. But the one thing we are doing, Rachel, we're taking it very seriously and we're doing the clinical trials right now to determine the best approach to a booster. And whether we do that booster 18 months, a year or whatever, we still are doing the study now to stay ahead of the game. Also, two key uh, experts yesterday showed that, quote, uh, damning science shows COVID-19 likely engineered in labs as more and more kind of evidence and um, yeah, evidence to support the claim is coming out. As you can see here, Dr. Stephen Quay and Richard Muller pointed to two key pieces of evidence to support the claim, which has increasingly gained steam after long being derided as a little more than speculation. The first relates to the nature of gain-of-function research, and again, this gets a little complicated, so I'm not going to go into the details too far, uh, where microbiologists tweak a virus's genome to alter its properties, making it more more transmissible or lethal, which means that it was done by microbiologists and not done by nature. 
Next, that the most compelling and dramatic differences in the genetic diversity of COVID-2 is compared with coronaviruses responsible for SARS and MERS. So apparently um, there's differences in the DNA and the genomes of this virus that could prove it to be man-made in a lab, which would really point to China. And um, you never know, we could actually see some restitution uh, that would be pretty awesome to have them pay for the next stimulus package. Although unlikely, uh, honestly, if, if they have absolute concrete evidence that somehow comes about, it is a possibility. Next up, President Biden will be, be meeting with the Republican negotiator, Shelley Moore Capito, over the next infrastructure package, which really relates to the next stimulus package, the American Jobs Plan and the American uh, Families Plan, the next stimulus package as well, as they're still going over um, the infrastructure package to determine if they can make a bipartisan deal. Now, I want to point this out here. As you can see here, during a conversation with the president Friday, uh, Mrs. Capito proposed adding additional $50 billion to the Republicans' uh, framework or the Republicans' um, kind of negotiation there. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said in a statement that Republicans last put forward a $928 billion plan plus the $50 billion would be $978 billion, so almost a trillion dollars. President Biden's most recently proposed a $1.7 trillion package. Now, I'm seeing conflicting information here. Um, and this is kind of like the fine details here. Um, number one, President Biden came down from like $2.3 trillion to $1.7 trillion on the infrastructure package. I'm seeing two competing sets of information right now. One, that says President Biden came down to $1.4 trillion. Two, that President Biden came down to around $1 trillion, which is almost where the um, Republicans are at. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's again, I'm not, it's, these negotiations go on behind closed doors. So I'm not sure if we know the true um, story yet on where they're currently at for the negotiations. But even if the Democrats are at $1.4 trillion and the Republicans are almost at $1 trillion, uh, I think we can get a deal done uh, bipartisan. I think that um, it would probably be in the Democrats' best interest to just pass this infrastructure package, come to a negotiation somewhere around $1 trillion, maybe $1.1 trillion, um, and just get the deal done, get it done fast, move on to the next stimulus package. There's multiple different ways they can go about this. They could combine them and pass them together without the Republicans through the reconciliation process. Um, of course, we'll have Senator Joe Manchin who will kind of be grandstanding and you know be kicking his feet. He's going to do that either way, honestly. Uh, but at the end of the day, Joe Manchin literally votes with the, uh, the Democrats 99.9% .9 of the time. And uh, along with Kirsten Cinema, the other um, senator from uh, the Democratic senator that, um, you know, likes to put up a fight. But at the end of the day, they both voted for the third stimulus check package and will likely do the same next time around. There's always a lot of fear mongering that, oh, they won't vote. They won't vote with Republicans or they'll vote with Republicans. But at the end of the day, literally like 99 point whatever percent of the time uh, they end up voting with the Democrats. And that's likely what we'll see in the next package. But I actually think it would be better for the Democrats and the Republicans to come together and pass this infrastructure package quickly uh, with a bipartisan deal at somewhere around one trillion or a little bit higher. Now, interestingly enough, there's a bipartisan group, both Republicans and Democrats of um, lawmakers from the House and the Senate that are coming together with a um, kind of their own counter proposal, not having to do with Biden or the Republican negotiator, Mrs. Capito. And apparently they're working on a bill at $878 billion, which is less than the Republicans are currently offering right now. You can also see here that Republicans are offering to the White House um, that their previous offer was $1.1 trillion, which would differ from the other information we're seeing that they're currently at around just under $1 trillion. So yeah, um, if you're really looking for the exact details, it's actually pretty hard to determine what is correct right now for the infrastructure negotiations. Because again, these negotiations go on behind closed doors. Um, President Biden has been said to doing them themselves or over phone call or Zoom call with Mrs. Capito from the Republican side. 
Um, it's interesting that she's the Republican negotiator now and not somebody like uh, Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell. Um, in the past, we had the Treasury Secretary, who was um, Steve Mnuchin. But um, yeah, so all we kind of need to know is that the both sides are somewhat close to maybe very close. And um, I think that the Democrats would probably be in their best interest to come down that last little bit, get the Republicans to come up that last little bit and uh, make a bipartisan deal. It kind of, you know, sinks kubaya with everybody in Congress and they get a deal done. They move it faster and then they can move on to the next stimulus package, the American Families Plan, much faster. And remember, Senator Bernie Sanders, who is the Senate budget chairman, the person in charge of the reconciliation process, says, quote, here's a radical idea. Majority rule. Not a single Republican voted to provide a $1,400 third stimulus check uh, from the third stimulus check package to the working class, or really to everybody that qualifies, or the $3,000 child tax credit for that those monthly stimulus checks that are going to start going out to children ages 6 through 17, $3,000 in total, $250 per month, or $3,600 for children under the age of 6 or $300 per month starting on July 15th. That's already passed for one year. And uh, he says that Republicans have voted uh, no to both of that because they voted no on the third stimulus check package. He says the Senate passed this important legislation with 51 votes with the reconciliation process. We must do the same with the American Jobs Plan and the American Families Plan, both the next infrastructure package and the next stimulus package. And really, I personally think the next stimulus package has about a 99% chance the Democrats are going to pass that on their own with the reconciliation process. I don't see Republicans coming, again, as we just seen Bernie Sanders say, not a single Republican voted yes on the third stimulus check package. Uh, so why would they vote on the fourth stimulus check package? It's just very unlikely. And remember, Senator Bernie Sanders, along with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, have both signed a public letter urging President Biden, along with over half of the Democrats in the Senate, to push for monthly recurring stimulus checks, either in this next infrastructure package or in this next stimulus package. I mean, um, there's a chance they could pass them both together. Either one would be fine. But remember, this is them pushing for not just a fourth stimulus check, but actually for monthly recurring stimulus checks. And the bill that they actually support from the Senate, from co-sponsored by Senator Ed Markey and Elizabeth Warren, um, the bill that both Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Bernie Sanders are for, is for uh, $2,000 per month. This is an actual bill introduced in the Senate and would go until the pandemic is declared over, the emergency situation is declared over by the United States. That could be six months from now, that could be four months from now, could be 10 months from now, uh, we don't know. But this bill that was introduced in the Senate would provide $2,000 monthly stimulus checks until the pandemic is over. Now, there is a bill also introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives by uh, Michigan Representative Rashida Tlaib and uh, Democratic Representative uh, Pramila Jayapal, who is the leader of the Democratic Progressive Caucus, which is about half of all the Democrats in the House of Representatives, like 100 different Democrats. So it's a lot of people um, just from the House alone. That's for That bill is for a $2,000 stimulus check then followed by $1,000 monthly recurring payments. This bill, however, would go until one year after the pandemic is declared over. So you're looking at maybe four to six months plus an additional 12 months, even after the pandemic is over, because the economic recovery is likely going to take years. President Biden himself and both White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki have left the door open for a fourth stimulus check and have said that if Congress wants to put a fourth stimulus check in the next package, that it's completely they can they can do so and it's up to Congress if they want to do so. President Biden has also said that the weak jobs report from April and May, which were both terrible, as well as the retail sales report, which was also terrible, basically says that, that uh, it, we need more stimulus. It makes it clear these ec economic reports that have come out, the need for more stimulus is there. And remember, because the next stimulus package is likely going to be passed the same way the third stimulus check package was through the reconciliation process, uh, that means that the Democrats can pass a 
completely on their own in the House, the Senate, and obviously the president can sign it. So they don't need to negotiate with Republicans over the next stimulus package. Um, but it would be better for the infrastructure package to pass through um, bipartisan support. They won't need to use a reconciliation card there, which would make it easier to pass the next stimulus package. Uh, I've gone over in the past several days, there's multiple different ways they can still pass more than one reconciliation process. And then in about four months, they get a whole new replenishment of reconciliation cards for the new fiscal year. Um, so really, um, the Democrats have multiple different ways to pass packages still, um, but it would be easier if they passed the infrastructure package with bipartisan support. It'll also be quicker, and it'll also make people like Senator Joe Manchin, Democratic senator who uh, you know, likes to be a thorn in the side of the Democrats. Um, if they do get a deal done with the de the Republicans on the infrastructure package with bipartisan support, and they don't kind of uh, jam it down their throats by doing the reconciliation process, um, it'll show people like Joe Manchin that, hey, they are negotiating with Republicans, but for the next stimulus package, uh, they're going to go the reconciliation route. So it would just make things easier all around. And remember, if you got the first, second, and third stimulus check, you'll likely get the fourth stimulus check when the qualifications come out. Um, it's very likely that the fourth stimulus check, whether it's a single check or monthly checks, we don't know this yet. I think best case scenario, we see the monthly stimulus checks. Worst case scenario, we see a single stimulus check added into the next package. Um, but if you got first, second, and third stimulus check, you're very likely going to receive the fourth stimulus check. I see all the time, what about people on Social Security, SSI, SSDI, and elderly? We're going to get nothing. And and that's not the case. And you'll see many people down below in the comments. If you got the first, second, and third stimulus check, you're very likely going to receive the fourth stimulus check as well, especially because the Democrats set their own income thresholds and qualifications for the first sec, or I'm sorry, for the third stimulus check, okay? So um, the Democrats set that third uh, stimulus check qualifications and the income thresholds. Remember, they lowered it down at the very last minute to people making only up to seventy-five to eighty thousand dollars. Double that for a couple, and one hundred and twelve thousand dollars for a single filer head of household. So the Democrats did that all on their own for the third stimulus check package. So it's very likely they'll just keep the same qualifications. For the next uh, stimulus check. So if you got the first, second, and third stimulus check, you'll likely get the fourth stimulus check as well. If you're on Social Security, SSI, SSDI, um, you're probably not anywhere close to that $75,000 uh, threshold. So again, I don't see any way that if they approve the fourth stimulus check that you won't get it. So you will be getting that. I, I see a lot of people saying that there won't be any more help. And remember, if you got the first, second, and third, you'll likely get the fourth. Okay. Hope that helps. There's a lot of other stimulus items such as Social Security raises that they're talking about, Medicare expansion that they're talking about, um, child tax credit, monthly stimulus checks that they're talking about, uh, free college, two years of free college, two years of free preschool. We really don't know what is going to end up in that next package yet. They're negotiating over all these things right now. Um, for sure, everything will not make it in this next package. But the Democrats have a little bit over a year to get all these different things done that they have under their agenda. The Social Security raises, the Medicare raises, the free college, um, the $25,000 home buyer grant. Whatever's not included in this next package, they're going to probably try to put everything they can in there, but still within reason so that they can get all the Democratic votes. But at the end of the day, um, they're already talking about another stimulus package after this. So everything won't be in this next package, hopefully as much as possible. Um, but remember, there will be more coming after this, as the Democrats have a little bit over a year uh, until the next election. And that's basically how long they have to get all these things done and to pass as much as they can. So I'll keep you up to date with everything. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. After subscribing, click the bell icon that appears next to the subscribe button to all notifications to get reminder notifications when we go live every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember those times and don't miss an episode because we cover different stimulus items and different news in each video. You should click this video here and watch this from yesterday about all the state stimulus checks, county stimulus checks, rent assistance programs, and other stimulus programs that are going on right now. Or you can click this video to see how to start your own business selling products on Amazon FBA. 
and I teach people how to do that. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.